Hey everyone, big doings on the Tandy 4825. Again, I know there's been a flurry of videos. Um, the frequency will slow down, but I actually crammed in those uh, CPM videos for the Model 16 because I knew once I got the 4825, things were going to get a little busy, and I was going to want to do a lot on that. So I did those uh, rapid fire the day before the uh, 4825 was coming in so I could do that. And then this thing has just been such an interesting bit of fun to work on. And for the first time in a long time, I've actually had a little time to work on these machines. Um, summer being what it is, travel and everything else, work schedules have kind of kept me away from these machines. So I'm taking advantage of the time while I've got it and I'm down here screwing with these things. So today we have a little bit of fun. Um, I've needed a way to get files to and from this thing without continually burning CD-ROMs <clears throat> or using floppy disks. Uh, I'm not even really uh, a fan of, of, I could use a serial cable and X modem or something, but I really was hoping to do a little better than that. So um, instead what I did was I decided I would try and recreate a little slice of connect connectivity with this thing the way it would have been in the mid 90s. And that is I set up a point to point server on a on the usual connector of my computers here, the Raspberry Pi. Uh, you've seen this thing in such videos as Tandy 1000 SX acting as a terminal to the Model 16, and I did one for SSH, and other such great videos. So this thing really is the glue for these machines, and running on it now um, is the point-to-point -point, uh, protocol daemon so that I can connect. So let's take a look at that, and then I'll show you how it works on the on Windows 95. I also have it set up for uh, Windows 3.1 and OS 2. I'll show you that. But what I have here is a shell script that runs uh, an endless loop of PPP daemons. Uh, I could set this up with, with a Getty and do it that way like I did with UUCP for the uh, HDFS demo. I didn't really want to use um, P the, a Getty instances because I'd have to start and stop and manage them. Um, and I didn't really want anything automatically coming up when the Pi starts. Even the UUCP bits that I originally did using a Getty, uh, I didn't want to do that. So instead I converted that one to a script that just has an endless loop, and I did the same with the PPP daemon. This way, to start any of these things, to have any connectivity, you've got to log into the Pi and actually start them. Um, and when, you know, when it comes to this machine, yes, I could have put an ISA network card in it. Yes, I could have connected it directly to the network, but I consider that to be a terrible idea for any of the three operating systems on here. I mean, there's really no reason why this machine should have constant connectivity. This is really just a convenience for me to get files and programs to and from it. So with that in mind, I wanted to kind of live it old school, um, dial-up networking style, but without the modem. So here I have my script, basically it's enable IP forwarding. It starts a mini HTTP in D instance, which I'll get into. And then I start up a point-to-point -point daemon and just keep doing it. So the daemon starts and when this thing, the 4825 connects, it will service it. When the connection drops, it'll just go right back to the top of the loop and do it again. Wait for the 4825 to connect. So let's get that a start. Okay. So now um, we are up and running. So now get ready for a blast from the past. So you'll recognize this little guy here, dial-up networking. Now Windows 95 by default doesn't allow you to use dial-up networking to connect to a PPP connection with a null modem. But uh, there's a lot of doc out there. Somebody created an INF file back in the 90s that basically adds a generic null modem device, uh, direct dial out to the serial cable without having to dial. And that's what we have here. So I found that INF file and installed it and got that all set up. Now the baud rate here is 57600. That's because when I ran at 115200, I started dropping packets and the connection was unreliable. I suspect that the uh, USB to serial adapter over there probably wasn't doing the best job keeping up. I know the serial port in this thing can do it. So I uh, I knocked it back to 57600 and connection got a lot more reliable. And 8 and on 1, your typical port settings. Um, I remember when troubleshooting, connecting with my ISP back in the 90s, we had a local ISP that ran PPP on Unix boxes. And this these screens all seemed like you lived a lot in here when you were trying to get the damn thing to work. And so now we have all that. And of course you can set up the server type. Of course we're PPP. Um, right now, you may have noticed, um, I don't have authentic authentication on, <clears throat> not for the PPP daemon. And I said, as I mentioned before, I'm not going through a Getty instance, so there's no need to log in to hit the PPP daemon. It's just um, on the port listening. And as a result, 
uh, we don't have to log on. Now, you might say, well, anybody that can connect a serial port to your machine, your probably can get on your network. Yeah, well, anybody that comes into this house with a machine and finds any one of the 24 uh, Ethernet jacks I've got scattered about this house can connect to the Internet. And probably you've got my wireless network password anyway, or at least my guest network password, because it's a QR code my wife made. So with that in mind, um, if you're going to come down here and connect a serial port to my Raspberry Pi, um, and log in and start the PPP daemon. Um, sure, have at, have at it. Welcome to my network at 57,600 bud. So, yeah, a little sarcasm there. But anyway, and we have our typical IP settings, which of course the PPP daemon will feed us. So, let's connect. Now, because I don't have auth on, I can just connect without a password. We're calling uh, TGB net, but we're really calling Jenny. And let's just dial this up. And this, without the modem sounds, but it, it just feels like I'm gonna go on at 28.8 kilobits per second download me something at three and a half K a second okay we are connected and you can see we are on at 57.6 and we've got a PPP connection and that's that and I'll just close this guy and if I look over here you can see that we now have a connection um, I do have this guy in the subnet I didn't brought him off onto its own subnet I could do that um, and if I wanted to control which hosts it could hit um, and do static routes, I could set that up. But right now, I don't see a need to. And we can ping the gateway. And there it is. <clears throat> so we're pinging out. Now, there is no good reason to connect this machine to anything off of this network. Um, and probably, if this becomes a more permanent solution for me, I will probably block access to the gateway just to avoid it going out to the network or going out to the internet. But... That said, um, it is technically capable of doing so. I could use a, I know there were relatively modern browsers, probably the last ones came out in the mid 2010s. Um, but in this case, we'll just go back to the old stalwart. Yeah. Okay, and the reason for that is because for what I'm gonna do, I don't really care. And I know in my intro video, I said this was Internet Explorer too. I'm an idiot, it's three. So either way, let's connect to, I mentioned that I had uh, mini HTTPD running. Okay. Oh, you got to put the slashes in there, you dumbass. There we go. Website found, waiting for reply. I haven't heard that in a while. So, mini HTTPD just gives me, I have it configured to uh, look at var www.html, and I have directory contents listed on. So, now I have, uh, I can download files here if I want. In fact, uh, I'll start this, but I'm not gonna let it finish. Um, but this way I can use this machine here to vet. So anything I download to this machine, I wanna be able to vet it, scan it for viruses, make sure it's safe. And this here is not my primary machine. Um, this is actually a $200 BJ's laptop special that I bought. Um, it actually has a CD, a CBD, a CD and DVD burner in the side of it. That's six gigs of RAM or something. I mean, in touchscreen. Uh, but it had the slowest hard drive on the planet. I mean, we're talking, like, Apple crap hard drives from their low-end Macs, like 4,200 RPM junk. Um, but I did replace that. I'll save this on the desktop. I did s replace that with a cheap $70 SSD drive. SSD drive, sorry. Why did I do three S's? SSD drive uh, that I got on Amazon. And it, actually, this thing is really usable. It's pretty snappy. Um, and it gives me a nice machine I can kick around, software I may not trust. If the thing gets borked, it doesn't have access to any of my accounts or anything special. I'll just reformat it and start again. Um, but anyway, let's go back to this. Watch this file download. And we're moving at a pretty good clip here. I think we're probably getting about 3 or 4K a second. Let's get the dial-up window here. I could put Internet Explorer 4 on here, but that would be dumb. Yeah, we're probably getting about 3.5 to 4K a second, maybe 5 at times. Okay, okay. So, and we're not going to let this finish. But that's the, the goal of it here. I want to be able to use this to get files on here. And now I have a way to do it. I'll have to wait a little bit, but I don't have to waste um, burnable CDs. Um, I don't, if I do it over serial with Xmodem anyway, it's going to take some time. But why not give myself the advantage of having IP connectivity to the machines instead of a direct serial? This way, if I have something somewhere else on the network, or like I want to use WinSCP or something else like that, I can, there are versions for Windows 95, and I can get files over here. So now let's take a look at this under Windows 3.1, shall we? And I know this video is going to be a little longer. Unlike the uh, CPM video, I'm not going to break this up into parts. 
but I am going to enjoy some of this frosty beer that you can see sitting here next to my computer. All right, let's uh, get Windows 3.1 going here. I'm going to start Windows 3.1 with no EMS. So in the Windows 3.1 department, we're using Trumpet Winsock. <clears throat> right now it's a 30-day evaluation version, but we'll deal with that. <clears throat> this version of Windows 3.1, it's 3.1.0, didn't come with the ta-da wit dot wave. I need to find that, because the chimes are for shutting down. Ta-da is for starting up. Anyway, let's get this going. So I don't have any browsers on here yet. i got to get a web browser for Windows 3.1. Um, but I do have Trumpet Windsock set up, and you can see here we're connected. So now I should be able to ping. Ah, we'll ping the gateway. And there we go. So we have connectivity. Not bad. So this way I have it in Windows 3.1. Um, like I mentioned, I don't have a browser here yet. I'll get one down here. Something <clears throat> old. All it really needs to do is be able to hit the directory listing that's on the Pi there so that I can transfer files up to the Pi with my HP laptop here and pull them down. But this will make it a lot easier than dealing with media, um, and it gives me a little more flexibility than a straight serial connection. So now that we've got that, let's take a look at OS2. Let's close this down. Okay. Yes, I know. And finally, you can see a couple extra games there. Uh, Duke Nukem 3D actually plays uh, fairly well. And I bought the full version of Doom on, was it GOG.com, G-O-G? Um, for all of $6, it's a DOS box package of the game, and I was able to <clears throat> buy it and put it on this machine. And it runs. So I didn't buy the full version of Duke Nukem 3D yet. The shareware version is, is pretty playable. It's, it's not as um, smooth as, as Doom is. So I figured I'd run a game night through this and let people play it, and if they like it enough, I'll spend the 6 or $7 and buy it if I can, assuming it's also on, on that website. Maybe it's not, and I'll just be stuck with a shareware version, but whatever. OS 2 was, I don't want to say the most difficult, it certainly was the longest to set up. So Windows 95 had dial-up networking installed. Uh, Trumpet Winsock I installed off a floppy disk, it took about five minutes. Um, OS2 had it on the CD-ROM, this is Warp Connect, but it took like half an hour to install, just waiting for it to go through its selective install and reboot two or three times. So we've got some new icons here. Uh, we have the IBM Internet Connection for OS2, which provides a bunch of utilities and things. Um, the IBM Web Explorer, ooh, and Gopher with some big chompy teeth and Newsreader 2, and a bunch of other stuff. Um, and I've also uh, created a shadow on the desktop of the Slip PM program, which is the dialer. Um, in the case of OS 2, uh, unlike Windows 95, uh, I was able to directly connect to a null modem without having to funk with it. So what I did was just created a connection here. And I'll show you this. I just created the names. It's a PPP connection again. And here we have connect info. Uh, it did make me type in a DNS server and my a domain name, which I just made up. It has nothing to do with what's going on in the server. Um, and then there's no server site info that I care about, mail and stuff like that. And then here we are, type mo of modem, null modem. That was built right in, didn't have to do anything special. And here you can see we're using COM1, baud rate 57600, um, 8, none, blah, blah, blah. So let's discard this and let's give it a connect. There it goes. There we go, we're on. Um, apparently I caught that at an interesting time because uh, it got a couple of bad acts, but when it finally did, did manage to negotiate the connection, so I'm not sure what happened there, but either way, we're up. So, um, OS2 does have ping on the command line. Make sure numlock is on. Ping the gateway, and we have gateway connectivity. Now, since we have IBM Web, Web Explorer, let's see if that will work. <clears throat> and I'll use it to connect to the uh, Pi again. I remember this being an absolutely terrible browser. Um, 
absolutely terrible. I don't even remember how, oh yeah, when document URL, wow. This thing just feels like IBM bureaucracy like manifested. There is no registered viewer for this type of file. Would you like to copy the file to your local disk? Oh, it must be because it doesn't end in HTML. Wow. Really? Really? Uh, sure, why not? Let's see what it looks like. Um, you know what? Can I... My desktop. We'll dump it on the desktop. Save as... WTF. Call that text. Let's see what it looks like. Okay. Uh, let me see if I can... Yeah, I really want to exit your crap. So I'm going to have to get a uh, better browser. Maybe something Mozilla-ish. Let's hope the OS2 system editor will open this. Yep, so it may not have liked the file extension, but there's the there's the link to mini httpd, and I bet if I scroll up, you'll see, yep, there it is, winscp.exe. Look at that. I mean, I guess I could type the file name in, but uh, yeah, well, that's interesting. Yeah, Web Explorer was always a, a POS. Let's just uh, delete that. Yes, please. Ooh, I love the drum roll. And that's it, and we'll hang this up. But we do have connectivity. Um, we just have to get a browser onto here, which um, might be a floppy disk operation. We'll see. Um, I could do it on CD-ROM if I really wanted to as well. But either way, so that is really the overview of using PPP. Um, like I mentioned, I really wanted to use uh, have TCP IP connectivity rather than just a direct uh, serial cable to one machine. It buys me a little flexibility in terms of what I can connect to and what I can do with it. Um, and it does kind of help use this machine and connectivity on it in the context that it would have been used um, in most homes back in the early to mid-90s, you know. Most of us were dialing up. I mean, I don't have the dial-up modem, but um, I guess you'll just have to give me a little bit of artistic license there. Uh, so that's it. That's the point-to-point uh, -point connection connectivity for the Tandy 4825SX using point-to-point -point daemon on Linux. So until next time, thank you for, for watching, and we'll catch you next time.